This is Friday 5 at 5 with the Denver Public Library. My name is Erin. I'm a librarian at DPL's Central Library. And in 15 minutes or less, we'll have you up to speed on five new titles out this month that we can't wait for you to read or listen to. Please note that new titles may not be added to OverDrive until after their publication date, so if you don't see the titles you'd like in ebook or e audio format, please check back. DPL is celebrating neurodiversity in April to recognize the talents and advantages of being neurodivergent. Watch for book lists becoming available on our website in April featuring neurodivergent characters, authors, and research on the topic. April is also Arab American Heritage Month, and the library has lots of great activities lined up. There will be discussions of Islamic geometric art at our Hamden, Sam Gary, and Park Hill branches. Check out Arab music, Arab story times, and more at the link below. In today's Five at Five, we are featuring titles by, for, and about women in recognition of Women's History Month, March 2023. And now, on to the books! The Once and Future Sex, Going Medieval on Women's Roles in Society by Eleanor Jenga is a delightful, informative, and well-researched look at all women in medieval society. From virgins to trollops to queens and martyrs, oh, and witches and whores as well, author Janiga is also mindful of telling the real stories, not just sharing the depiction of women in their culture at that time. Classical Greek and Roman philosophy and Christian theology all come into play in the interpretation of women's roles and capabilities and culpabilities. Wonderful illustrations from medieval manuscripts and artworks throughout punctuate the clever writing. One particularly interesting section covers how women elected to join converts to avoid the horrid conditions of married life. So maybe not the worst alternative if a woman was also interested in brewing, a key product of convents and nunneries, along with wine, textiles, and animal husbandry. This book exemplifies history made fun. Copious notes and index included. From publisher W.W. W. Norton. If this interests you, other titles of interest might include Reckoning, the newest book from V., formerly known as Eve Insler, Tony Award-winning best-selling author of The Vagina Monologues. Or take a look at Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. Morgan Harper Nichols is an autistic multidisciplinary artist, and You Are Only Just Beginning, Lessons for the Journey Ahead is her newest collection of poetry. In it, she reimagines the classic heroine's journey, from the very first call to adventure, through trials, hardships, and new relationships, all the way back home, and offers key lessons and affirmations to encourage and equip you every step of the way. Nichols asks, who told you that you were not free to swim wildly into the deep? Then invites readers to find the courage to honor the soul's divine cravings, and to step out in faith, knowing that goodness and grace are never far away. The unknown waits for you, and now is the time to go. Chock full of gorgeous and inspiring artwork, this is a perfect gift book for upcoming graduates, and maybe even Mother's Day, or just to dip into when a place of beauty and calm is needed. From publisher Zondervan. For equally inspiring poetry, pick up my favorite of the year, Franny Choi's The World Keeps Ending and the World Goes On, in which the poet imagines what togetherness between Black and Asian and other marginalized communities can look like. Or try Seven Aunts by Stacey Lola Drulliard, an inspired patchwork of memoir and reminiscence, poetry, testimony, love letters, and family lore. Next up is Rosewater by Liv Little, founder of the magazine Galdem, a gorgeously written queer love story. When Elsie is evicted from her flat, she's forced to move in with her former best friend, a situation both strained and one of potential salvation. 
a cushion against the agonies of a bartending job and an affair with her boss. Throughout Rosewater, protagonist Elsie learns to confront her feelings rather than running away from them, and allows herself to be vulnerable. Although Elsie begins the novel thinking her life is a mess beyond repair, she slowly picks herself up again and starts to heal. Little's sinuous and snappy Consul Roman about this young, struggling poet in South London is the first release from Get Lifted Books, a publishing imprint co-led by singer John Legend. Little sensitively and powerfully explores many topics throughout the book, including race, sexuality, strained relationships with family, the importance of community, and the power of art. For more Loves Lost and Found, give The First Bad Man by Miranda July a look. But if you prefer something more meet cute, grab Plain English by Rachel Spangler for a trip to the British countryside. In her evocative memoir, Bird Girl, Looking to the Skies in Search of a Better Future, which travel, doubles as a travelogue, British Bangladeshi environmental activist Maya Rose Craig, aka Bird Girl, writes of her passion for bird watching, her mother's struggle with mental illness, and her dedication to saving the planet. Craig is an important voice on youth activism, ornithology, diversity, and climate change, and recently appeared alongside Malala Yousafi and Greta Thunberg at COP26. Age 14, she founded Black to Nature aiming to engage minority ethnic teenagers with nature. And at 17, she became the youngest person to see half the world's bird species. This is her story, a, journal, a journey defined by her love for these extraordinary creatures. Because large or small, brown, patterned, or jeweled, there is something about birds that makes us, even for just moments at a time, lift our eyes away from our lives and up to the skies. The astuteness with which the 20-year-old writes about her early life will reassure readers that our future is in good hands. From publisher Keladin Books. Bird Girl is the perfect read for fans of H is for Hawk, or Diary of a Young Naturalist, or for any aspiring environmentalist. In Period, The Real Story of Menstruation, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign anthropology professor Catherine Clancy first focuses on the myriad ways human societies, their leaders, scientists, and health practitioners have gotten it wrong. From myths and taboos about the purpose and health effects of menstruation to the quasi-scientific studies purporting to demonstrate that menstruating people give off toxic fumes, that can harm children or other humans. Readers will find Clancy's writing full of delight and curiosity, but also a lot of righteous anger. Period tells the story of a misunderstood and stigmatized process that is crucial to our understanding of human biology, reproduction, and variable ways of being. The author also shares the misogynist and racist origin story for the Western misconception of periods, Spoiler alert, it's eugenics all the way down. And what a just future that includes menstruating bodies might look like. From Princeton University Press. For a further cultural view, take a look at Our Red Book, Intimate Histories of Periods Growing and Changing, gathered by Rachel Cowder Nailbuff, and Red Moon Gang, An Inclusive Guide to Periods by Tara Costello. And, in case you missed it, Barbara Brandon Croft is an American cartoonist best known for creating the comic strip Where I'm Coming From and for being the first nationally syndicated African American female cartoonist. In this collection, Where I'm Coming From, Selected Strips, 1991-2005, to 2005, Brandon Croft appraises popular opinion through nine distinct women in constant dialogue. From diets to daycare to debt to the dreaded microaggressions of everyday racism, no issue is off-limits. 
This remarkable and unapologetically funny career retrospective holds a mirror up to the ways society has changed and all the ways it hasn't. The Overdue Salute not only provides a nostalgic trip through the lives of Brandon Croft's nine central female characters, the book also includes essays and letters that spotlight just how unique her achievement was. The Magic in Where I'm Coming From is its ability to impress an honest image of black life without sacrificing black joy, bolstered by unexpected one-liners eliciting much-needed laughter. From publisher Drawn and Quarterly. Pair this with The Essential Dykes to Watch Out For from Alison Bechtel or Love Letters to Jane's World by Paige Braddock. That's all for this month. Thank you for tuning in to Denver Public Library's Friday 5 at 5. We hope you enjoy these great reads and listens. Check out or place a hold on these titles and a whole lot more right now at denverlibrary.org. Link below. Tune in next month for new recommended reads. Bye!